Hey everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry, and in this video I want to go back to some acid-based chemistry and talk about the basicity of amines. So grab your cup of coffee and notebook to work through the examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started. So normally, when we are talking about some sort of acid-based properties, we are going to take a molecule and reap the uh, acidic proton of that molecule, and then we are going to analyze uh, what whatever is the result, whatever our conjugate base is. This allows us to determine which compound is more acidic or, or to find the most acidic proton in a molecule if we have multiple different acidic protons. If you need a bit of a refresher on this topic, I have a ton of tutorials on the acid-base equilibrium and I'll leave all the links in the description below. Now, in the case of the amines though, the amine itself is a base, so we can either analyze the amine itself or look at the resulting conjugate acid, but let's take it one step at a time. Let's look at a simple acid-base reaction. Here I have butylamine reacting with the HCl as my acid. The butylamine here is of course going to be my base, so I'm going to say that this nitrogen is going to get the proton from my HCl, and that going to give me the corresponding product, looking like this. This is of course a very simple reaction, and I would fully expect you to be able to write it on your own. The trickery comes to the scene when we start dressing up the amine with different functional groups around the nitrogen, which can drastically alter its basicity. So first of all, before we proceed, I want to make sure that we are on the same page and I want to define the term basicity. Here I'm going to define basicity as the ability to accept proton from another molecule or the environment. And the more basic the species is, the better it is going to be in this process, the better it's going to be at grabbing the proton from something else. And just like in the case of the acidity, we can express basicity with a certain number. For acids, we are going to typically use the pKa values, while for bases we can use the pKa B values. And we remember a simple relationship that the pKa plus pKb equals 14. Well, that's nice and easy, right? Very convenient. Well, actually, no. It is easy, yes, but is it actually convenient? I wouldn't go that far. The thing is, this relationship between the pKa and pKb values only applies to aqueous solutions. And how often are we dealing with the aqueous solutions in organic chemistry? Well, next to never, I would say. So what are we going to do in this case? Well, the easy solution to this conundrum is going to be using the pKa values, but we are not going to be looking at the pKa values of the amines themselves, rather we are going to be looking at the pKa values of the conjugate acid, and we sometimes, or oftentimes, depending on your instructor in the textbook, going to represent those as pKaH. So this H over here represents the pKa value of the conjugate acid. And since in this case we are no longer bound to just aqueous solutions, we can easily use these pKa values to determine whether our amines are more or less basic by essentially looking at the value and seeing how acidic the conjugate acid is. In this case we are going to be using sort of like a backwards logic, so if the pKa H of my um, conjugate acid is large, that means that the amine is rather basic. If, on contrary, my pKaH value is low, that means that my amine is not very basic. So this way we can still use our pKa values and our pKa table to determine the basicity of a species when the species itself is a base. The typical pKaH values for amines are going to be somewhere between 9 and 10, although they can sometimes drop as low as something like 4 to 5, which is actually already comparable to the carboxylic acids. So it really depends on the molecule itself, and we are going to see a lot of different examples where the pKaH value can vary greatly. So now, when we reminded ourselves a little bit what the pKa values are and how to determine what is more, what is less uh, basic or acidic, let's talk about the different factors that actually affect the basicity of amines. So if a base is a proton acceptor, that means that anything that will increase the electron density on the nitrogen will make it more basic, while at the same time anything that's 
going to decrease the electron density on the nitrogen, going to make it less basic. And here we're going to look at typical factors that we have already seen before in the acid-base chemistry. Namely, those are going to be resonance, induction, hybridization, and stereochindrances. Notice that in this case we are skipping the electronegativity and the atomic size, we're not going to be looking at those, because here we are predominantly dealing with the nitrogen-containing species, so the electron pair is going to be on our nitrogen, which means that um, the electronegativity or the atomic size are never going to be applicable for us. That's why we're only going to be looking at the resonance induction hybridization, and we're also going to look at the steric hindrances around those nitrogens, because that can be important. And the first factor that I want to talk about here is going to be resonance. Now, I'm not going to be looking at the resonance in the molecule in general. I'm only going to be interested in the resonance that involves the electron pairs on the nitrogen atom. So, for instance, if I look at this cyclohexanamine and I compare it to aniline, then we can see that the electron pair that I have on my nitrogen, so this electron pair in the first case, that electron pair is localized, which means that it does not participate in any kind of resonance. While the electron pair in my aniline the electron pair on the bottom nitrogen, that one is delocalized, because those electrons can participate in resonance and jump into my aromatic ring like that. For the practice sake, do draw all those resonance structures and make sure that you can do that yourself as well. And if you feel a little rusty on resonance, make sure you review this topic, because that topic is going to be huge for the basicity of different amines. So now, if I take each of those molecules and protonate them, so let's say I'm going to have some sort of a generic acid, HB, doesn't matter what sort of acid I have, I will use the same acid in both cases, so I have HB, HB here, HB there, and I will protonate both of those, then in the first case I'm going to get the species that looks like that, and in the second case I'm going to have this guy. So now I can easily compare the acidity of my conjugate acids in each case by looking up those values in the pKa table. So if I look at the pKa table for the first one, I will see that the pKa value for that one is around 11, while the pKa value for the other one, that one is around 4.5. Six. So we see quite a drastic difference between those, we have nearly 10 to the 6 power difference in the uh, acidity between those. And why such a drastic difference, you might ask? Well, think about the electron pair on the nitrogen and its availability. If it is delocalized, like in the case of aniline, in the case of my second molecule, it is already preoccupied doing something else, so it is going to be less available for any kind of bonding, and the nitrogen will be less likely to donate those electrons to make bond with the proton. In the case of the localized electron pair, like in my top example, well, that electron pair isn't really doing anything, so it is freely available for the uh, proton, so we can easily donate that, which means that the top molecule is going going to be more basic. And of course, as I've mentioned a moment ago, when it comes to the pKa of the conjugate acid, if that pKa is a larger value, that is associated with a more basic amine as well. So we have a confirmation from both a conceptual perspective by thinking about how available our electrons are, and from the perspective of the pure numbers of the pure pKa values here. Now, the next factor is going to be the induction. And while induction is not as strong of a factor as resonance, it can be quite significant, depending on the structure of the amine itself, of course, and the distance uh, from our electron withdrawing group. So, for instance, let's say I have this piperidine molecule, and I'm going to compare it to the morpholine molecule under it. In the first case, if I were to protonate that one, again, I'm going to use some sort of a generic uh, acid, so something like HB, doesn't matter what that acid is, I'm going to end up with the conjugate acid that looks like that. If I look up the pKa value of this species, then the pKa for that one is going to be, again, somewhere in the vicinity of 11. If I do the same trick for my bottom molecule, for my morpholine, again, I'm going to take some sort of generic acid here, my HB, and protonate it at the nitrogen, I'm going to end up with the conjugate acid that looks like this. And for this one, if I were to look up this pKa value, well, that one is actually going to be around 8.4. Yeah, it's not as big of a difference as in the previous case, but the difference is still here, it's almost 10 to the third power difference here, which is still significant 
significant enough. It's almost a thousand times. This oxygen that we have in this molecule is pulling the electron density towards itself. So in this case, what we end up with is essentially a situation in which oxygen is indirectly through the induction pulling the electron density towards itself, making the electron pair on the nitrogen less available. And if that electron pair is less available, it means that my nitrogen is going to be less basic. So in this case, pipiridine, my top molecule, is again going to be more basic. And we can again confirm that by looking at our PKA values uh, as as well, the, the PKA value associated with the less acidic conjugate acid with the higher number is going to be associated with a more basic amine overall. So the hybridization is another factor that we need to keep in mind when we are talking about the basicity of amines. The lower the p character of the orbital with the electron pair, the less basic it is going to be. And I'm going to remind you that if we have an S P hybridized species, the P character here is roughly 75%. If I am looking at the SP2 hybridized species, the P character there is going to be around 66%. And finally, if we look at the SP hybridized species, well, the P character there is going to be 50%. So the lower this character, the less basic the electron pair is going to be. So if I have an electron pair on the sp hybridized nitrogen, generally it's going to be less uh, basic than something on the sp3 hybridized nitrogen. Let me show you an example. Let's say I have a nitrile that looks like that, and let's compare it to a similarly looking amine. In the first case, my nitrile, this nitrogen is the sp hybridized nitrogen, while the one on the bottom, this one, well, that is an sp3 hybridized species. So based on our uh, knowledge of the p character of those, we can estimate that the bottom species should be more basic. But let's not just trust the general idea. Let's compare the actual numbers. If I take each of those molecules and protonate them, so I will again use some sort of a generic acid, in this case, some sort of Hb, then in the first case I'm going to end up with the species where I have my C triple bond N and I have a hydrogen attached to that nitrogen, so my nitrogen is going to be positively charged, and I'm going to have a very similar case in the second one where I'm going to have my pH, CH2, then I have my nitrogen, and I have three protons sitting on that with the positive charge on the nitrogen as well. If I were to compare the PKA values of those, then the PKA of the bottom species is going to be somewhere around 10, while the PKA of the top species, are you ready for that? That PKA is actually going to be around negative 10, so we are talking about nearly 10 to the 20th power difference between those. Of course, I made sure that I found the most drastic difference between those things. In reality, it's not always going to be that drastic, but nonetheless, hybridization is something that you need to keep in mind when you're thinking about the acid-base properties of your amines. The lower hybridization, the worse of a base you are going to have in general. Is it always going to be the case? Well, it depends on the molecule itself. Itself. You can never blindly go with just one factor. So I suggest that you always look at the hybridization as the last factor after you have uh, considered your resonance and inductive effects. Because if there is nothing else, then the hybridization is going to be the important factor. If you have resonance stabilization and if you have inductive effects, then hybridization most likely is not going to be that significant. And the last factor that I want to talk about here is going to be the steric hindrance. That's definitely something that you want to keep in mind when we are talking about the basicity of amines, simply because in order to be able to grab the hydrogen with the electron pair on the nitrogen, well, that electron pair needs to be able to physically reach the place where our protons are. So while we generally consider alkyl groups as electron donating species, which should increase the electron density on the nitrogen, don't forget that those guys do occupy some space. And the less space you have around your nitrogen atom, the more difficult it would be for that nitrogen to grab the proton from another molecule. So generally speaking, when we are thinking about nitrogens, we can have a primary amine, which is going to look like this, or we can have a secondary amine, which is going to look like that, where nitrogen is connected to two other groups, or we can have a tertiary amine, 
which going to look like this, where the nitrogen is connected to three different alkyl groups. And as I've mentioned, while alkyl group is the generally electron donating group, the R groups, depending on their size, they can cause a lot of steric hindrances. So in general, if I were to come up with a, you know, rule of thumb, so to speak, uh, we would say that the secondary amines, these guys, they are typically most basic. Because in this case, we have a perfect balance of the electron donating effect from the R groups and not enough steric hindrance from those groups. So for instance, to give you an example, let's say I will look at the primary amine, PHNH2 aniline, and if I were to protonate that one, I would end up with PHNH3, like that. The pKa of that species is going to be somewhere around 4.6. Now I'm going to take pH nitrogen, and on that nitrogen we have a couple of ethyl groups. If we were to protonate that one, and we are going to end up with the nitrogen with the extra proton, and we still have a couple of those ethyl groups sitting on that one, well, in this case, the pKa value for that is going to be around 4.2. Yeah, it's not that big of a difference, it's about 0.4 uh, on the uh, logarithmic scale, but 0.4 10 to the power of 0.4, if I were to take it out of this logarithmic form, uh, or this exponential form, I should say, and I were to give you the actual number, that would be roughly 2.5 times difference, which means that the top molecule is twice as basic as the bottom one. So, while that difference might seem low, it is actually there. The only time when a tertiary amine would be more basic than similarly looking secondary one is when we have a molecule that is somehow conformationally locked and the alkyl group just physically cannot move around much, so because of that it cannot make too much of a mess around the nitrogen. An example of such molecule would be, for instance, quinuclidine, or another good example that you are probably going to see in your course is going to be DAPCO, which stands for diazobicyclo Octane. These two compounds, they are conformationally locked, so they essentially look like the nitrogen uh, that is at the tip of the arrow, so that nitrogen can easily donate the electron pair and can easily be a base or a nucleophile, depending on what sort of needs we have. And because these conformational lock, these molecules, they are abnormally basic for their structures. And of course, a quick tutorial like this cannot give you the answers for all possible variations that you might uh, face on the test. However, these factors should always be your first steps in the amine analysis. So make sure you do plenty of practice to build up your detective skills in finding all the factors that may influence the amine basicity. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and especially thank you all Organic Chemistry Tutor members for your support. Like and share to help promote this video so more students can see it, and subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow!